Hey everyone, welcome to the CBT Micro Nuggets on the all new Certified Associate in Project Management, otherwise known as the CAPM. Especially this one because it's dealing with the brand new fifth edition of the Guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, otherwise known as the PMBOK. Now, I know many of you, if you have anything to do with project management, especially if you're like an IT manager who's starting to work his way or her way up, you've heard about how it's really important to get certified in the world of project management. Now, there's a lot of them out there. There is even not only PMI, the Project Management Institute, there's Prince2, there's ITIL, there's Project Plus, there's a whole bunch of things that are out there. So which one is best for you? Well, if you are an entry-level person, I would suggest that you get PMI Certified Associate in Project Management, otherwise known, as we would like to call it, the CAPM. The CAPM is a really good first entry-level certification for project managers. And I mean, it's really designed for people that have little or no experience. You can start off, uh, you know, from the ground floor. Well, uh, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, le let's take a look at this. Let's say that we have uh, two people here. We've got uh, Sally over here and we've got Tom. So over here, we've got Sally and Sally has been doing project management. She's been a project management for five to six years. Okay. And then over here we have Tom. Tom just started yesterday. Maybe he's the IT manager and he, his boss says, you need to get project management certified. So he has maybe one to two years of experience being a project manager. Well, the difference between the two individuals is that Sally should get the PMP, the Project Management Professional Certification. Why? Number one, you need about that much experience and that many hours of experience to even sign up for the PMP exam. Meanwhile, over here, the CAPM is a perfect entry level certification for him. And the reason why is, as most of you have probably heard, that there is now a fifth edition to the PMBOK which is the Project Mon Management Body of Knowledge. We call it the PMBOK for short. And starting on July 1st, there is an all-new CAPM exam. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, the CAPM exam really is all about the principles and terminology that you find in the Guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, or otherwise known as the PMBOK Guide. That is really the standard of project management that is recognized around the world as the best practices. And so what the CAPM allows you to do is get, as I like to say, the foot in in the door. Well, what do I mean by that? And, and, and basically, what are some of the things that I will need to study? Well, let me show you. I'm a firm believer, gang, that if you want information, go directly to the source. And the source for all of the information about this exam is at PMI.org's website, so the Project Management Institute. And when you get there, you can download this bad boy. This is the Cap M Handbook. And the CAPM handbook has everything you need to know about what it is to apply for the exam, how to, uh, you know, all the, the requirements for the exam and all that. But because you're taking this micro nugget, let me run you through the basics. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to apply. Now, to apply, you're going to need a couple of things. First off, you're going to need a secondary degree. Now, a secondary degree, for those of us in the U.S., is going to be a high school diploma or something like a GED. Now, if you know, we I know we have a lot of people from all around the globe, all over the world that listen to our CBT nuggets. Uh, in your particular country, I'm sure you have to have a certain amount of school before you can go to the university. Whatever that diploma, whatever that the degree is, that's what you need in order to take the CAP M exam. And now the second thing is you're going to need one of two things. You are either going to need 1500 hours of project management experience 
And a lot of people saying, wow, that's that seems like a lot for an entry level certification like a Cap M. Actually, 1,500 hours goes by pretty quick. If you're an IT manager or you're into project management, let's say if, if you're an IT manager and you had to install a few servers, you you know took your whole company and went from the old uh, public telephone system, uh, you know, kind of a hybrid system, and you went to a voice over IP entire system, I bet you you're pretty close to those 1,500 hours. Or if you're like, I don't want to have to do that, or I don't have those, you can do the second thing, which is going to get 23 hours of what they call education in project management. Now, the way that you can do this is great. You can go right here to CBT Nuggets. At CBT Nuggets, we have several courses that qualify for those 23 hours, including my brand new upcoming Certified Associate in Project Management 5.0 exam prep class. Now, once you do that, guess what? You're going to go out and you're going to take a 150 question multiple choice exam. And the exam is pretty much a very straightforward question. Um, you know, you don't have to be too advanced in your project experience or education. I mean, you do have to study. And what you are going to want to study is the PMBOK that we mentioned. Once you study that PMBOK, it's going to have things like your knowledge areas, your process groups. And you're going to need to know what the inputs, the tools and techniques and outputs are. Uh, what is the definition of a project according to PMI? Which, by the way, the answer is it is a temporary endeavor to to create a unique product service or result and uh, you are typically using progressive elaboration. If you know things like that, you're going to be able to pass this CAPM exam. Well, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for joining me.